be finishing up the chapter on personality disorders. Last time we had a broad overview of the study of personality disorders and theory of personality disorders. I actually got to attend a really interesting talk after class on Monday. Uh, there was a visiting uh, faculty member who was applying for a position in our department who actually has a statistical technique that he uses that will show whether uh, something is dimensional or categorical, that distinction we talked about last time. So it was a really neat talk that tied into what we had just gone over in class. So I didn't know you could show that with statistics, but apparently you can. So um, today we'll go over all of the specific personality disorders. And if you recall, the DSM-4 mentions 10 distinct disorders divided into three clusters. And we mentioned what the clusters were at the end of Monday's class. Uh, but let's go ahead and just start running through these. And that's what we're going to do for most of today's class, is just talk about these individual disorders. So we'll begin with the erratic cluster of disorders. Uh, so uh, people with these disorders are often described as being uh, violent, emotional, or unpredictable. And they can sometimes have very dramatic patterns of behavior. So let's begin with uh, antisocial personality disorder. Oh, you need me to go back? Okay. I'm good. Okay. So we'll start with antisocial personality disorder. So what does it mean to say that someone is antisocial or that they're acting in an antisocial manner? Okay, so they, they might not like they might not get along with other people, might not like to interact with other people. Yeah, so that's that's one definition that we often use, but um, a lot of times what this means is that these people don't really care what others think about their behavior. So uh, they tend to have a lack of concern about social norms, and they, they don't really care about getting approval from others. So uh, these folks uh, are often relatively violent individuals, violent in their behavior. Uh, they can be pretty impulsive, so they seem like they lack, lack self-control and just do what they want to do when they want to do it. Uh, they can be uh, fairly reckless and irresponsible, so they don't care too much about the uh, consequences or repercussions of their actions. Uh, they tend to be very easily irritated, and as I mentioned, uh, having high levels of aggression is another thing that's very characteristic of this disorder. So they'll, they'll fly off the handle pretty easily, uh, even in response to a fairly minor frustration. Like in a previous class we talked about all those daily hassles, those little things that can get on your nerves, and uh, even those things will set these people off. So, um, another really central characteristic to antisocial personality disorder is uh, low levels of empathy. So, I mentioned before how they don't care about the consequences of their actions very much, and this certainly applies to the impact that their behaviors have on other people. So, uh, they're indifferent to suffering, generally speaking. If they hurt someone else in trying to reach some goal that they have, uh, they don't really feel guilty about it. Uh, these folks can also be uh, manipulative sometimes. Occasionally they're described as having uh, a type of superficial charm. So they'll be nice to other people, but not because they actually like these other people as much as that they just want to influence these folks and try to get their own way, make these other people do what they want them to do. So this has been tied to another um, pretty well-known personality construct called uh, psychopathy. So uh, there are some subtle differences, but I'll let you 
read about those in your textbook. But the similarities involve this kind of superficial charm and a real lack of empathy or guilt. So, any questions about this antisocial personality disorder? All right. Uh, this also is much more common in men than women, and it tends to emerge relatively early in life. Uh, usually, it manifests itself by the mid to late teens. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is borderline personality disorder. So. The key word for this one is going to be instability. So these people have instability in their relationships with others, whether we're talking about romantic relationships or friendships. Uh, they're fairly instable in regards to the emotions that they feel. So uh, they are probably going to be high on that measure of affect intensity that we talked about back in the emotion chapter. And they're also fairly unstable in regard to their own self-image. So the goals that they have, uh, the careers that they desire, tend to fluctuate more than you would expect from your average person. And so this uh, is in stark contrast to a lot of the basic principles of personality that we've talked about throughout the semester. So we've said over and over again that personality is relatively stable throughout the lifespan. And these people are really unstable in a lot of different uh, areas. So uh, these folks have, uh, well, they often have a pretty strong fear of abandonment. Uh, they think that, well, they view their relationships with others very tentatively. They think that any day now their best friend could reject them and stop liking them. Uh, and they will often act fairly aggressively in response to a perceived rejection. So they, they get really angry if they think that uh, someone is criticizing them, for example. And uh, they're prone to uh, self-harm and suicidal behaviors. A lot of times they use this as a manipulative strategy to try to keep people in an unsatisfied relationship with them. So they'll say things like, I'll kill myself if you leave me, or I'm going to hurt myself if, uh, you know, if we break up. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's a pretty strong manipulative tactic there. Uh, they also have a lot of uh, strong negative emotions, so they're prone to experience a lot of panic and anger and uh, some more low low arousal emotions, like despair as well. Um, so these folks will also, like I said, change their interests around pretty rapidly. Uh, someone with personal borderline personality disorder might be likely to be doing really well in college, and they'll make it three quarters of the way through a semester and have good grades, uh, and then they'll just drop out because they decide they want to do something else. So they engage in a lot of things that you might call self-handicapping behaviors. Uh, that relate back to this rapidly shifting self-image. So, any questions about this one? All right. So next we have histrionic personality disorder. So some of these folks you can think of as uh, being people pleasers. Uh, I like to use. Bless you. I like to use the boss from the TV show The Office as an example of this one. Michael Scott, that character. Uh, so these folks have a very strong need for attention. They want the spotlight to be on them. And they also have a very strong need for approval. So they want to be liked. Which, I mean, we all want to be liked to some extent, but this need is especially strong in these folks. Uh, they tend to be pretty emotional. Uh, And they have a lot of strong emotional reactions to uh, what most people would perceive as little inconsequential things. Uh, these folks might be described as uh, drama queens. I know that's a, a term that gets thrown out sometimes, but it would be really descriptive of someone with histrionic personality disorder. Um, they tend to have very shallow opinions. 
So, for example, if uh, uh, let's say you're talking to someone with this personality disorder, and they tell you that uh, they ask you what you did this weekend, and you say, "Oh, I went and saw that new Disney movie, Tangled, in the theater." Well, before they tell you, if they have seen it, before they tell you what they thought of it, they want to know what you thought. And if you liked it, then they'll echo that back to you and say, "Oh, yeah, yeah, I really liked it too." But if you didn't like it, then they'll say, "Yeah, I know, it was kind of, it was kind of boring. It really dragged in the middle there." Uh, so they, they really don't want to express their own opinions because they just want to be liked. So they'll go along with whatever somebody else is saying. Um, one other interesting characteristic of uh, this disorder is that uh, sometimes people are kind of sexually provocative. So this is just another way of getting a lot of attention, attention from others. And it can certainly lead to some positive appraisals from certain members of the opposite sex. Uh, so, sometimes this takes the form of um, extreme gender portrayal, so men might try to portray themselves as being really macho and masculine, uh, whereas women might try to, women with this disorder might try to portray themselves as being uh, what's called hyper-feminine, so wear a lot of like really frilly clothes with really bright colors uh, and things like that. So, questions about this? All right. So uh, finally, the last disorder in this erratic cluster is narcissistic personality disorder. And of course, we've talked about narcissism quite a bit before in this class. And you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between someone with narcissistic personality disorder and somebody who's just a little narcissistic. Does anybody know what, like, where that line might be? Yeah, that's that's certainly the case. So, narcissistic personality disorder is going to be more extreme. Um, another big factor here is that for a behavior to be considered disorder, disordered, it has to usually cause the person to experience some distress and some dysfunction in their lives. So, uh, some people can get along perfectly fine if they're a little narcissistic, but it can get to this extreme point in which it's really disrupting a lot of their social relationships and they're having problems at work and so on. So, uh, like we said, the one central characteristic is this strong need to be admired, uh, which is sort of similar to histrionic personality disorder, although uh, these folks don't have a lot of those other features. So. These people have a really strong sense of self-importance. They think that they are all that. Uh, kind of like we saw with antisocial personality disorder, uh, they have a lack of empathy or insight into other people's feelings. So they don't really think about or care what other people want, because it's all about them. They'll often have a strong sense of entitlement. So if there's some um, benefit that is being distributed, they will think that uh, it should go to them, that they should be paid more than other people, for example. Um, and I'll, I'll go into more detail on this one in a second. Uh, they have a lot of strong feelings of superiority. They think that they're better than everyone else. And they tend to be especially prone to experiencing uh, envy. So envy is probably one of the most central characteristics to this one. Uh, so if they know someone who achieves some wonderful accomplishment, uh, like in the world of academia, that would be getting a publication or getting a grant or you know a promotion to full professor or somebody who gets an award, they they don't feel happy for those people because they think. I should have gotten that. The fact that this other person is getting something good reflects negatively on me because I didn't get it. So they, they have a hard time, like I said, just feeling anything but envy for other people's accomplishments. Any questions about this one? 